One of the consequences of modern physics is that the, as I think Sir James Jeans said, that uh, the world begins to look more like a giant thought than a giant machine. Um, what he meant is that uh, down deep in the quantum view of the world, the, the thing that is most important is information and knowledge. It, that seems to be the driver of everything. And in addition, the more you look at individual particles, the more you realize that there is no such thing as one electron. An electron or any elementary particle exists only in relationship to other things, like other particles or, or the universe at large. This means that, that deeply enough, and you de dive down into the nature of matter, everything we know about the, the everyday world dissolves. There are no objects anymore. There are only relationships. There's no locality anymore. There's no time anymore. It all begins to dissolve away. That's why I use this idea of the, uh, like the Cheshire cat dissolves away and all that's left is a smile and eventually that goes away too. The more you look at something in detail in what we think of as solid matter, the less and less solid it begins to look. And eventually there's nothing left. There's only information and relationships. Well, that, that doesn't sound very satisfying, and it certainly doesn't match our everyday experience. It makes the, the world seem way too slippery and way too ephemeral. And even worse, it, if it is true that the fabric of reality at very deep levels consists of some kind of strange, not quite energy, not quite matter, informational relationships among things, then how can you build up from that to the world as we see it at large? It's as though the, you, you, you have the fabric of reality. You're, you're able to hold it, and you're looking closer to it, and you see that, well, it has threads, and you know, there's the warp and the woof of, of threads in it. But the closer you look to the threads, the more you realize that they're, they're actually not made out of anything. They're like relationships that give the appearance of being made out of something. There's actually nothing there. So this is what, this is what has led some people to look at the relationship between what people like uh, the founders of the quantum of quantum theory said, what Einstein said about the nature of what is that fabric of reality versus what Buddha said, as an example. And if you take out some of the jargon and you then compare the two statements one, one next to the other, you can't tell anymore what Einstein said versus what Buddha said because they sound really, really close. And it has a lot to do with the nature of some sort of ephemeral, we don't know what to call it, from that emerges everything that we see and, and experience. So which gives me great sympathy then for someone who is a mystic who can go into states and then feel the, the connectivity of the entire universe. I think what they're feeling and experiencing is that they are that fabric of reality. There's some, some piece of them which has an awareness of what this fabric actually is and it's something that connects everything. And it's actually not made out of anything at least not anything that we have words that we can give to it. I, I suppose it must be made of something. You know, we're, we're very substance-driven. It's got to be made out of something, but whatever that is, we don't have words yet that can describe it.